So we want to run Unraid on your QNAP TS-853U and I think that's a great idea since Unraid is so much better than the QNAP software. In this video we're going to have a look at the specifics of a QNAP device um, running Unraid, uh, especially the fan control, temperature monitoring and so on. So first um, we need a bootable USB and um, Unraid has a pretty good installer for that, so you can go download and then here the version that you like will take 6.92 and after downloading that we get this uh, installer that creates that bootable um, Unraid drive that we need to start our um, our machine. Um, yeah, so basically here you can select select if you want the stable um, or the kind of beta or next, they call it next. Um, for me this is 6.92. Then USB. So I made them, initially I made a mistake that when I tried it out on the right I used a cheapo um, USB disk and sure enough that uh, device failed after like three months or so. So I would really suggest that you use a decent drive. Um, also, it's sad that, or I've heard that uh, apparently an USB 2.0 are a little bit more reliable rather than a 3.0. But yeah, I don't know how true that is, but yeah, they are cheaper anyways. And size-wise, it doesn't really matter. Anything above, say, one gigabyte is plenty, plenty space. So use whatever you have, as long as it's a decent quality. Um, I will erase and write the, the, the image so we can start the QNAP. So for your first start, you need um, the USB drive that we just made, um, a keyboard. For the first start you will also need a display out, so you can connect that with the HDMI interface and network. You can enter the BIOS with F2. So now that we are in the BIOS, we need to change the boot order and we do that here. Um, it's already uh, found that the USB disk with, um, with Unraid on it is the uh, first one, but if that isn't in your case, you have to um, enable the UFI US, uh, option. The other two USB options that you can see here are the internal DOM or the QNAP software that you actually could remove if you were planning to use only on Ray. Um, I haven't done that, but you could do it. There is, yeah. So we select that. And uh, apart from that, there is nothing much to do in the BIOS. Uh, yeah. If you want to use virtualized machines, you have to enable uh, the Intel virtualization technology here. Um, apart from that, there is not much to do. So we save and exit and let the system start up normally. Here you can see the um, Unraid boot options. Um, we want to just a normal boot, so the first option is perfect for us. Now you can see um, the Unraid uh, machine started up. Uh, the IP address that you can see here on this picture, um, that's the one that we're going to use to um, connect to the machine via a browser on, on another machine, so we don't have to set up the, the, the NAS on with this 
and that's the only time we need uh, an external monitor for this. Um, from now on, we're going to use it headless. So, this is uh, the first start after we made the USB de uh, boot device. Um, I'm not going into the whole setting up an array and uh, setting a password and all that. I'm focusing on the QNAP specifics. And as you may have heard previously, um, the machine is very loud. It's um, The fans are r running at full speed all the time. And there is no temperature control. Um, we're going to change that. A part of that, um, everything seems to work pretty fine. All the base are working, or all the hard drive base. Um, USB is working, so that's fine. The only thing that we need to change is, is um, temperature control. First, we need a few plugins. And the first one that we want to install is a um, community plugin, so you get kind of an App Store like. Um, the links, uh, or all the links are um, in the description. So we install that. Now you can see we got uh, another tab, the apps. And we have to disclaimer, yeah, I understand, I understand. Now the first uh, thing that we want to install is, or a second actually, is um, Nerd Tools. Um, and that allows us to install Perl. And we need Perl to run um, sensor detect. Without that, it won't work and we need it. Um, now we go to plugins tab in our tools. And it's already in there. Just uh, slide it up to on, apply and it's installing the packages. Now we're done. Um, next, we want to install Autofan Control. And lastly, we need system temperature, uh, and also dynamics. So these are all the plugins uh, that we need um, in order to get it to work, but we are not really done yet. So first thing, you want to open a terminal. If you SSH into the machine, make sure that you are root. If you are using the terminal on the web UI, you are already root. Now, if you type in sensors, it gives us a readout of, um, of all the available or currently available sensors. And we see that it's actually only this ISA adapter and the CPU core temperature, but that's about it and that's not enough. So we want to make uh, see if the, if the machine can detect more. And for that, we use sensor detect. Now here, um, it's safe to agree to all the default options. In capital letter is always the default option and you can trigger that with enter or you can type in yes. Um, and we stick with that. So let it run through. Now the important stuff for us is actually these two. Uh, this and this. So we will need to install um, the driver for the FinTech Super I.O. sensor, as well as um, Core Temp for the Intel Digital Thermal sensor. And to do that, we do um, need to add these drivers to the kernel, and we do that with a um, modpro core temp and modprobe 
Where is it? Here. Now these uh, sensors should be detected by the system and we can run sensors and you can see now it has a lot more sensor readings available. We have still have the ISA adapter but we also have um, the super IO sensor readings with voltages and everything and what's interesting to us is the fan speed and temperatures. Now we are done in the command prompt, we can close that. And since we have the readings, we can now um, configure the plugins that we just installed. But before that, you can see here still no temperature reading here and here. And we can't change the fan speed. And to do that, we go in back to plugins. And we first do the auto fan control. Obviously, we want to enable it. And now PWM controller, um, we need one and two. The third one is a uh, fan header on the main board, but it's empty, it's, um, or at least in my configuration, it's not populated, might be different with yours. Um, but here it's uh, one and two. We start with one and we want to detect and it has detected something. Now with the minimum PWM value, we don't want to detect or auto detect it. Um, at least with my configuration, it does not work. So basically um, we have to do it by hand. And by Intel specifications, you don't want to go below 30%, uh, but below, also between 30 and 100%, you can, change whatever you want. Now, another thing is that it, it is 30 or these percentages are mapped to between zero and 255. Uh, so we have to choose a value between say 80 and 255 or roughly 30% and 100%. Uh, I'll go with 100 as a minimum value. I let these on the default, 35 and 45 high temperature thresholds. The only thing I will change is um, I'll reduce the refresh rate to one minute. I will do it again. Apply. And for the PWM2, it's the same. Let it detect. I'll take 100. And one minute, apply. Oh, I forgot to enable it. Now, what you can't hear, but um, actually the fans have spun down. We can see that here. They're both at two and a half, roughly two and a half thousand RPMs which is fine and with with that setting um this machine or my machine um didn't exceed 40 degrees cent uh, centigrade for the cpu even under pretty heavy load so for me it's fine it might be different with uh, higher ambient temperatures or something like that yeah next thing we still want um, a temperature reading and for that we need to set up the um, system fan temper uh, system temperature plugin. Detect, save. That's as you remember. These are the two um, kernel modules that we installed uh, for the processor temperature. I don't. I, mean, I take just the highest value. So it's core temps core zero one two three. Um, I just take the highest one, which is usually is the last one, at least on that machine, I don't know. Mainboard temperature, I use, it, I think it's either um, DTS1 or DTS0. 
and uh, since the DTS0 is higher than DTS1, I just take this one. Array fan speed, we want PWM1 and 2. And apply. Now you can see here on the lower we have all the fan speeds in this uh, lower part of the screen. Also, we have now temperature readings here and here. Though the machine is working pretty good, it's um, the, all the QNAP specific specifics of that machine are now done. Um, now you could uh, proceed with setting up your array and all that. Um, I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, I would be glad if you subscribe, share, if you have questions, obviously ask them. I'll do my best to answer it. Yeah, have a nice evening.